Messi. Oh, brilliant skill from Lionel Messi. Searching forward with real menace here. Brilliant from Messi. Oh, what a goal that is! And the whole of this ground stands and applauds the 19-year-old. It is Ronaldo, and it's in! Cristiano Ronaldo, 18 years young, scores his first goal for this famous club. Rudy needs to control. Bounces his chances. Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo and Wayne Rooney are currently at the peak of their powers and are widely regarded as three of the best footballers in the world. Catapulted into the public eye when in their early teens, they thrived and flourished under the spotlight, going on to become the best players of their generation. However, the truth is that only a tiny percentage of young footballers can handle that weight of expectation, let alone go on to become worldwide superstars. So unless you played the early football manager computer games, you probably won't have heard of footballers Freddie Adu, Sonny Pike and Cherno Samba. All described as wonder kids during their early years, the aspiring footballers didn't turn into the greats they were so heavily dubbed to be. Each equipped with the skills to set the world on fire, they did not go on to become the next Maradona or Pele. They all have a different story as to how their downfall transpired, however one reoccurring theme was pressure. So I'll be posing the question of, is there too much pressure being put on young footballers of today? A case that will support the answer to that question being yes, is that of Gambian footballer Cherno Samba. As a 13-year-old, Samba hit the headlines in 1998 when he scored 132 goals in 32 games. He was immediately overwhelmed by offers from big clubs, notably a £2 million offer from Liverpool, but the deal fell through and he joined London club Millwall. He left soon after though as he embarked on a journey which has seen him play for six different clubs in the space of five years, making only 27 career appearances to date. Taken from an interview whilst he was playing for Plymouth Argyle Football Club, Samba explains why he never quite made it. Too much pressure was on me, that's inside football and outside football, you know, you had all these people coming at you and agents, you know, every time they can hurry that I didn't even know, so, and the fact that I didn't move that, to, to make that move to Liverpool at a young age, I thought to myself, well, this is my only chance if I miss this. There was times that I said to myself, um, yeah, I don't, you know, I lost appetite for the game, I wanted to quit, but to be fair, you know, I blame some of the stuff back to myself as well because um, I didn't want to train hard and, you know, I was, there was stuff that I was ducking and diving because, you know, I just lost appetite for the game. But. So Samba blames his fall from grace on the pressures that surrounded him, however he also acknowledges that he himself was to blame. These internal and external sources of pressure can have a big impact on a player mentally. As from a young age, they might face parental pressure to succeed. They then have to deal with pressure that they put on themselves. And once they're in a team, they have to impress the manager if they want playing time. And finally, they could face peer pressure from fellow teammates. We also forget the pressure that media and the fans put on players. The media play a big part in how footballers portrayed in the public eye. And the fans can express their opinions more than ever, thanks to social networking sites such as Twitter and Facebook. So the pressures footballers have to deal with are unprecedented. And it's hard enough for, for an experienced professional to deal with let alone someone so young. So to explore these factors in more depth, I headed to Plymouth Argyle Football Club to speak to some of the coaching staff and a couple of the younger players. The club are one of the biggest in the football league and have produced some notable young players in the past, which include the likes of Dan Goslin, Joe Mason and Paul Connolly. Another homegrown talent to recently come out of the academy is 18-year-old Matt LeCoyne. The youngster has made quite the impression with his talents being recognised by England as he was handed his first international cap at under-18s earlier this year. I caught up with him at the training ground where he talks about his relationship with the fans and how he's coping with the demands of professional football. Do you ever interact with the fans via social networking sites and um, do you ever get affected by their opinions of you? Um, nah, you, fans will always have their opinions and you can't please everyone. That's what I've learned over the last year and a half or so, you, you can never please everyone. Um, I interact with some fans on Twitter and stuff so just just got to give you a little bit back to the fans. And how have you coped with the demands of professional football uh, seeing as you're only 18? Um, there's a little bit of pressure to it, but you just just got to take it in your stride because there's only gonna, there's only be more pressure as you get older and you just got to get, get used to it. He then goes on to talk about the effects of the media on youngsters and believes that the players should put it upon themselves to succeed and not let pressure get the better of them. Necessary myself, but in some articles I've seen about other young footballers, definitely, it's definitely, definitely put more pressure on young young people, so 
it's just one of the things that's always going to be around, unfortunately. Yeah, and why, why do you think that is? Why do you think the media put put so much pressure on young know. players to succeed, it's, especially in England? I'm not sure. It's just the only way they can get a story, I suppose. But I think, to be fair, most of the young people in England are doing well, especially yeah. like the likes of Jack Wilshire. And when when Rooney was a kid, he might be like the world's next best player. And to be fair, he's done all right with all the pressure that's been surrounded by him. There will always be a little bit of pressure, but you just... You just gotta take no notice of it and just do what you've been doing for years. Just play the game that like you enjoy playing. Just get on with it. So Lacoint recognises that whilst there are many pressures on young footballers, it is part and parcel of the game, and players should be able to handle it if they want to be successful. Another noteworthy graduate of the academy is Kevin Hodges. Now head of youth development and considered a Plymouth Argyle legend, he went through the ranks at the academy himself, so he knows exactly what every young player goes through. And Hodges recognises whilst there are many pressures surrounding young players, two of the biggest sources of pressure are that of the player and their parents. Now in terms of pressure, pressure is a funny word. I think, you know, in terms of pressure is what pressure, pressure the player puts upon himself. I use pressure to motivate myself, you know, and, and to get more out of myself. And some people put so much pressure on themselves that it actually hinders their development. And, and their confidence. So it's how you can cope with pressure and there's obviously lots of different types of pressure. There's peer pressure, you know, especially some of our younger players, they're put under pressure by their parents. You know, some parents live, you know, perhaps that parent might have missed out of becoming a professional footballer, therefore he's living through his son and putting unnecessary pressure on his son, possibly. That's, that, that's some sort of uh, situations that we've come up against. He also recognises that whilst there are heavy demands on younger players, there are now new support measures available to them to help relieve some pressure. Yes, there are pressure and demands of you know performing to the, the best of their ability, but if you want to play at the highest levels, you have to be able to cope with it and you have to be able to deal with it. Now, obviously, there's there's ways and means of doing that. You can you can do it yourself, and if you can manage that yourself, and obviously now there's psychologists coming into the game where they have support and help with a psychologist. Now, I didn't have that luxury. Now, some, that may be something that I probably might have taken advantage of. It might have just helped me to have got on to another level, possibly. You know, I will never know that. Um, so that, that, you know, that, that, that is a big thing that's been introduced into the football world um, and in most sports. And finally, um, what advice would you give young footballers with dealing uh, with pressure? Again, like I said, if, if I had my time again, I would probably utilise the opportunities that we have now with, with psychologists uh, to be able to talk to them and, and they give you feedback. Um, but at the same time, I think you've got to try and become strong enough to be able to cope with the pressure yourself. And you're going to go through some difficult periods, difficult times, but you've got to find ways and means by learning through mistakes and things that happen to you in life, you know, you have to then find ways and means of coping with that yourself. The views expressed by LeCointe and Hodges regarding the pressures on young footballers will be different to that of someone outside the game. So I went and met with Mike Baker who is sports editor at the Western Morning News. Having worked in the industry for many years, he's seen the effects that the media can have on footballers and he believes the media don't play as big of a part as many people believe and that the main source of pressure actually comes from the players themselves. Most of the pressure would come from the player. It'd have to. Mm. If you're feeling the pressure from fans, it would be because you weren't playing well. The manager, yeah, he's going to be shouting at you if you're not doing well. The only one that can really change that is you. If he's, you know, you're not doing what he's asking him, well, you know, do what he's asking you. Yeah. <laughs> that ends that pressure pretty quickly, you know. Because it's an industry where if you play really well, like in most things, if you get good at something, you get to go and do somewhere else for more money. So that's where, you know, it's not pressure. It's not real pressure. It's a great job. It's a, it's a fantastic job. It's the sort of job that most, you know, boys yeah. would dream of doing. So, you know, how, where's the pressure, really? Mm. So if, if there's pressure to get better, which there is, and that's the real pressure in football, not to be bad, not to lose, not to have the fans on your back, not to have the manager shouting at you, then it's got to come from you. It's got to come from within. I don't think the media plays very much of a part in it at all. So it's fair to say that to a certain extent there is too much pressure being placed on young footballers. 
However, the general consensus is that the main source of pressure doesn't come from the manager, parents, fans or even the media, but from the players themselves.